Hi everyone, welcome back to our ongoing series on how to create a life operating system in Notion. Today is going to be an interesting one because we're actually going to venture outside of Notion now and see how the pillars, pipelines, and vault system is still helpful to structuring and running how we work as we get into other hierarchical structures where we have to save files and information such as Dropbox, Google Drive, Box.com, Evernote, OneNote, any place where you'll have a hierarchical structure we're going to want to have it be consistent with what we've set up in Notion. So we have one organizational structure, one categorization that is universal across our whole world so that everything is structured the same. And therefore, no matter where we are in any of our digital systems or even in our physical paper filing, if you happen to have one, it's still structured exactly the same way. And I'm going to show you how we do that with pillars, pipelines, and vaults. But before we dive in, I just want to quickly mention I have launched the online community I've been hoping to build for such a long time. I hope you'll join us. It's called the Year Zero Collective. Year Zero is about reboots, fresh starts, and diving into the next stage of our life. It's already filled with people who are really passionate about Notion, PPV, mental clarity, habits and routines, knowledge management, health and fitness, helping each other, supporting each other to learn and grow and discover. And it's the place where I'm most active now, answering questions, raising questions. I'll be doing regular live streams in there. It's going to be a super active place and certainly the home of PPV, Pillars, Pipelines, and Vaults, but also one of the most knowledgeable, passionate Notion communities anywhere, and also a very growth-minded sphere of exploration. So hope you'll join us there. That's all at yearzero.io. You can find all the information about it there and see if it's something you want to join. I hope you will. And with that, let's dive in. As we've seen in the last few videos, the Pillars, Pipelines, and Vaults system is organized by pillars. Pillars are the segments of your life. Basically everything in your life is broken into somewhere between five and 15 or so segments. And those are the organizational categories such that everything you do will fit into one of those categories. These are not things that have some hurdle or priority. They're just a breakout of your whole life and an organization by category. So we've got the groupings of these within the growth grouping, then several within the home life and business. And these pillars that we're about to take a look at break everything down, organize and categorize across all the pipelines, which is all the tasks, projects, and goals. All those elements fit within certain pillar categories. At the same time, all the vaults, all the knowledge topics, all the information we capture, all the training and courses we do, all the notes and ideas we write down, all the tools and skills we research, all of these or organized and categorized by the different pillars in our life, then that keeps them very organized. That way, when we look at our pillar dashboards, we can see everything across the pipelines and vaults that are relevant to that pillar category. And I just show you this so we can see that pillars are the slices by which everything is organized. As we jump back into our alignment zone, which is where our pillars live, we open them up. We see we have the three big groupings, growth, home life, and business. Within them, we have each of the pillars that are relevant. But when we lay it out in the traditional view that we've been looking at mostly throughout the series, we see, again, the three categorizations and then all of our pillars. This is the organizational structure. Everything else in the system across the pipelines and the vaults will be organized by these categories. And that's great. While we're in Notion, all those relational links keep everything organized and give us the ability to go into each of these dashboards for each of these slices of our life. And we've got it all laid out, but that's all within Notion. Sometimes we have to do things outside of Notion. Notion does consolidate more than any tool or application I've ever seen or used. So we can do more in Notion than we ever did before in any other platform. However, we still can't do everything and there's still some platforms that are better for other functions. Large files or certain application specific type files that need to be opened and closed and accessed quickly need to be stored in a file directory on your computer, ideally synced in the cloud. So you've got Dropbox, Google Drive, which is doing the folder hierarchy on your computer in the cloud syncing. That's a really important system that Notion does not replace. In some ways we still use Evernote I use it as the shoebox, dump everything in that I might want in the future. I use my vaults in Notion when I know that I'm going to use it for a project that's active. But if there's something I might use, but I'm not sure, I'll just dump it in Evernote. It's easier to find it there than to search all over the web. And I have notebooks in there. I also use OneNote occasionally for organizing larger projects. And in all those places, we have hierarchical systems that need to be organized. Well, if you're implementing a pillars, pipelines, and vaults life operating system in Notion, you need to extend that beyond the borders of Notion. And the way you do that is using our categorization system, which is the pillars. The pillars are, as we've seen here, this hierarchical structure ports very easily and nicely into any other hierarchical 
context that you need it. So let's jump over to my Dropbox folders on Windows and then I'll also show you what it looks like on Mac and you'll see how this will translate everywhere. So here's my folder structure on my Windows system and I'll show you Mac in just a second. And it is structured exactly the same as what we have in Notion. So we could have just the top level hierarchy be growth, business, home life. That would be nice and that would be clean. But you, then you're wasting a level of hierarchy and the top level is particularly important. You wanna to get to things in fewer clicks rather than more clicks. So to just have three groupings at the top directory level is a bit of a waste. So what I've done is I've defined business as B, growth as G, and home life as H. So we've got B, G, H, and therefore it's sorting by the groupings, exactly as a notion. And then each of the pillars within the grouping is listed next to the grouping letter. So within business, we have admin, client execution, content creation, product development, sales and marketing. Exactly the same here within business, client execution, content, admin, sales, product development. It's the exact same structure. And in Windows, you're able to assign an icon. I've grouped them so that the color matching pairs with the ones in Notion. So the green has a tree for growth. The gold in Notion is paired with this gold icon in Windows. And the blue home life is paired with the blue rectangle in Windows as well. So the visual cues are the same. I go from Notion to Dropbox in my computer hard drive directory and it's the exact same organizational system. You jump inside of it, and then you have subcategories. And I'll sometimes number them when I want them to be presented in a certain order. But you can then organize within that. And then within each grouping, you'll have various levels of activity across different groupings, but each will have an archive, which I'll put Z underscore archive. That's where you have stuff that you're no longer using, you get rid of the clutter, you throw it in the archive, but it lives within the right context. So it's still within the right folder within content creation. So I might go inside video production and I've got more. If I needed to archive within video production, I'd have a Z underscore archive in here as well. So it's all structured, all in the same place, all organized. And it's consistent across every system. Disregard this vault down here. This is a feature that Dropbox just added. It's terrible, you can't get rid of it. I wish I could delete it. It won't let me delete it. So. This is just forced upon me by Dropbox. The only exception to the hierarchy that I have in Dropbox is Z underscore delivery. Z underscore, just to put it at the bottom, delivery means if I'm transferring files, these are almost always temporary files that I'm transferring, and I'll just throw them in the delivery folder until the transfer of that file is done. I, you know, I've sent it to somebody else and they've downloaded it, then I can delete it. So I have a folder here for delivery. If you have specialty functions like apps or software that will automatically capture things into a Dropbox folder. I sometimes, in delivery, I also have a Zoom folder that the Zoom recordings will automatically save into that folder. If you have a scanner or something that will automatically save, but you have to designate one folder for it, you can either put it in delivery or put a specialty utility folder at the bottom. If you put Z underscore, it'll stay at the bottom then that's fine in addition to our pillar hierarchy. But those are special utility situations and those are very few. The rest of it was organized by the hierarchy defined by our pillars. And here's a view of my Mac. And this is a screenshot from my Mac. So Mac is the same thing. I've got the letter of the category, I've got the letter of the grouping, B for business, G for growth, H for home and family. It's laid out alphabetically here. So again, we have the first initial of the three groupings business, growth, home life, and then the pillar follows the grouping letter. So they're all organized exactly the same way across my Mac, across my Windows, across Notion, in the Dropbox app through the browser itself. And then my Evernote is the same thing, my OneNote is the same thing, my Google Drive is the same thing. So everywhere you go, it's the same layout. Once again, he Mac doesn't let you change the icon, but it lets you change the color designation. So I've changed the business ones to gold. I've changed the growth ones to green and the home life ones to blue, just like my colorization in Notion. Now this is very different from what you see in Para. Para also takes the structure within your primary system and mirrors it across other applications. However, Para is structuring the hierarchy based on prioritization. That's essentially what Para is. Projects are the top level priority because they have deadlines and they're active projects that you're working on. Areas are areas of focus that have to be maintained at a high level. They're ongoing things that are basically high priorities, not as high as the projects with their deadlines, 
but higher than everything else. So areas are the second level of priority. Then what are called resources are really topics of interest. These are topics you're interested in, but they're not maintained ongoing at a high level. So they're just sort of general topics that are at the third level of prioritization in the system. And then archive is the lowest level of prioritization. So that's really all Para is. And in Para, you'll use those categories, projects, areas, resources, or topics of interest, and archives within your primary system and then across Dropbox and Google Drive and everything else. And this can work for some people, but it's not optimal universally. The problem with organizing by a priority hierarchy is things change. So projects are always changing. Different projects are rotating in and out. And sometimes a project will be completed with a deadline and then it'll move and become an area to be maintained at a high level. Sometimes you lose interest in something and it gets demoted into a topic of interest. So things are shifting because priorities are changing. That's what happens. Priorities always change. And therefore, the assets you're parking in these folders are constantly moving around. Well, that's really confusing and leads to you going into different folders and searching. You don't want to be searching folders because you can't remember what changed at what point. That is really inefficient. This approach, by using pillars, a consistent categorization across your life, things are not changing from folder to folder. They're consistently in the same folder. And once you know where they are, they're always there and you never have to search for them. Now, sometimes when a folder structure gets large, it could be helpful to have a prioritization, but the prioritization should be within the category structure. So if I'm doing content production and I have certain projects that are more important than others, and I'm going into them a lot, but that whole folder is filled with a lot of stuff, you can start breaking it into different groupings by hot and cold activities. It's still within content creation. So it's always where you look for it. But just like we took our mind expansion dashboard and broke it into hot topics, cold topics, and all topics, just so you have the option. Hot topics are the things that are in active projects or you've designated as top priorities. Cold topics are less frequently used, less frequently accessed things. In the same way we've broken these out in our mind expansion or learning dashboard, you can do the exact same thing within a busy folder. Some folders won't be busy and you won't need it, but the busy folders, break them into hot topics and cold topics within the pillar structure. You don't do hot topics at the top level and medium topics and cold topics because those are always changing. And that's essentially what Para does. By keeping it first and foremost within the consistent pillar structure, and then secondarily having hot and cold, you can organize the pillars that have a lot going on in a way that you prioritize what's active. In the ones that are not as active, you don't need it because they're not that busy and they don't have that many items in it. Within these systems outside of Notion and Dropbox and Drive and the others, you only use them to the extent that you need them. Now, many of these will might be empty, in which case you can just remove them altogether. I keep them here so they're there and ready for me as I need them, but some of them are just really empty because I'm not saving these kinds of files on the computer or into Dropbox. They're largely in Notion. So the quiet ones just take care of themselves because they're not that active. The active ones, you could create a hot and cold topic structure within them, and that's fine. Everything is consistently in its place. Nothing is moving around. You don't have to go searching through folders. And it's consistently in its place across every platform you use. You know exactly where to look for it, and you know exactly how to find it. So I hope that's helpful. That was revolutionary for me. When I started taking the pillar structure and organizing everything else in all my other directories and all my other hierarchies, by pillars, it changed my life. Like suddenly I knew exactly where everything was, no matter how long it's been since I went in there. For my business or some documents I have to keep in paper form, my file cabinet is structured by pillars as well. Everything is structured by pillars, whether it's in Notion or outside of Notion. It's consistent, it's reliable, and it makes life so much easier, so much cleaner, and so much more organized. If this is of interest, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get updates on future videos, leave thoughts or questions below, or join us in my new online community for a broader conversation. It's at yearzero.io. And hit like if you found this video valuable. I also write a newsletter called Mind and Machine on increasing human capability. I give away several of my best Notion templates to anyone who subscribes to the newsletter. You can, of course, unsubscribe at any time, but I hope you'll give it a chance. I work super hard to pack it with a lot of valuable insight. The newsletter link is also below in the show notes. Thanks for watching. Lots more to come.